In our next backend module, we're going to focus on building out a RESTful API interface for our client, which is our React application. What is REST? Why are they useful? Well, RESTful API stands for Representable State Transfer, and it's basically a whole different standardization of dealing with some data from a server. It's an interface. So in an interface, we need to define contracts. We need to define you know, different types of routes. It's basically a way of explaining and giving guidance to a caller or an interface or some developers of how they should interact and call into your server and what to expect back in that communication. Through a very good RESTful interface, we will have HTTP methods. These are standard methods that you will see throughout the web. So a GET request, a POST, a PUT, DELETE, those are called CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete. So for GET, we're fetching for that type of request. Usually when we're posting, we are usually creating a new record. PUT traditionally is used for updating. However, I have seen POST used in that scenario. Delete is very self-explanatory. When we delete something, we want to remove it. So these are the types of ways we can build out our interface. We can build out our routes. We can give them methods. So it's very clear what our intention is and how to use it. It is very resource oriented. It allows our clients to access these resources through these HTTP methods. So the get request, as I said, there's these different types of method. Get is used to retrieve data from the server. Post is used normally to store data or create data. Put traditionally in a very good RESTful API is used to update something existing. And delete is very self-explanatory. It removes the resource from the server. Now, how do we accomplish this in Node.js? We have express.js, which is a framework. So we have Node that can handle HTTP requests, but when we install this framework, we're given more tools, better syntax to work with, and it simplifies things quite a bit. So to set up an express.js project, we need to make sure that we have Node.js installed already. When we install Node.js, it's going to install npm, the node package manager as well. Then we need to create a directory for our project, initialize the Node.js project using npm init. So that's basically a command we can run on the command line. npm init will create that package.json. Once we get the package.json file, now we can install all the dependencies we need into our project. So using again, npm on the command line, npm install express.js. That's going to grab all that dependencies of that framework and install that into your application. Create a app.js or a server.js file, and you can define and bring in the express instance of express. And then after that, we're going to set up a couple of routes. Now in our scenario, we're just going to set up a simple get, post, and delete. And then we need to tie this in to our logic that we already have. So we already have some custom modules for a watch list, but now we need to, instead of triggering them programmatically, we're gonna use the API as the trigger and then call into those methods. So express.js can do a lot of things for us. You know, we have this concept called middleware. So middleware is actually a package that can run before the request hits the server. So you can think of the request like a pipeline. We can add logging. We could add security. We could add some other types of things. We could transform the data of the request before it hits our endpoint. And then on the way out as well, we could validate data. We could add error handling. We could sanitize data with third-party libraries. And of course, we can add some type of throttling into our request so our server is not overloaded. So we could return JSON responses, as we mentioned. We could return XML responses. We can actually return HTML. We could return a static page. We also can return text responses. For us, the, J the JSON response, the JavaScript object notation, that type of payload is very good for us because that is what we're expecting in the front end. As we mentioned with middleware, so middleware is all this other type of functionality we could add. We can enhance our whole application if we wanted to, such as logging, parsing the request, adding headers and all that type of things. So we can do all this with middleware and we can make things more complicated and more complex if we wanted to. 
when we get a request, when we get an endpoint, we always get three arguments. Now we get the request, we get the response, and we always get another one, which we kind of ignore. It's actually called the next function. Now, most of the time we ignore the next function, but that is actually what is used in the middleware pipeline. So if there is a request that comes in and we have logging, logging is applied, then they call and invoke the next. And then you go next, maybe to security, and maybe you go next, you do some security work, you do, and then you go next into our API. So it's like a pipeline. So think of it that way. So we can build our own middleware, but more on that later. Uh, we have Express installed now. Now we wanna build out a little bit of an API for our watch list items, and we need to add this functionality next in our next module.